Good afternoon guys, welcome to another video. As you can probably see, I'm stood in the Avon. <laughs> now we've come to the swim where we had a nice hit of chub uh, a couple of weeks ago. I thought I'd have another go in here. <laughs> As you can hear, it's absolutely blowing a gale. What's prompted me to come today in this ridiculous weather is that tomorrow it's gonna be ridiculously windy as well and throwing it down all day. Now the river at the moment has come up to a lovely level. It's coloured up a little bit and I just thought we've got to get out. We've got to get out and do what we can. The last time I was stood here, to put it in perspective, you can probably see I'm just about up to my groin. I stood here last time we trotted and it wasn't going over my waders. So we are two footish up. Now I'm hoping, and it's often the case on the Avon, I'm hoping that's got the fish in a feeding mood. Not that they weren't in a feeding mood last time we were here, but uh, yeah, I'm hoping that'll have got them on the munch. All I've done, it's very simple today. I've actually got a stick float with me, but I'm not planning on using that. I'm planning on getting on the waggler like we did last time. As you see, I've got, <laughs> I've got the bait waiter out here. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to be any good or not. Forget the way you'll see. We've got the bait waiter out there. I'm going to as I say, I've got a stick float rod with me, but I'm probably not going to use that. I'm probably going to go on the waggler. I thought perhaps if we could get out far enough, it may be better to use the stick float, purely from a control point of view. And it, it, that may well be the case. But at the moment, this water's rattling through. As I say, this may be an absolute waste of time. But we'll give it an hour, if we can actually fish. <laughs> you know, again, I could probably go on the, on the ledger and it'd probably be a better bet. But uh, I just fancy coming down here and doing a little bit more waggler fishing. And just to give you an idea as well, winds, we've got winds of um, just about 40 miles an hour. <laughs> but it's not a wide section of the Avon here, as you can see. So we should be able to control the float. That's what I'm thinking. I've got here my 13 foot Advanta X5 float rod. And I'm going to put on here a waggler of some description. I'm sort of trying to decide what to use at the moment. Because <laughs> we haven't got far to get out, as you can see. So I'm going to fish out here, a couple of rod lengths perhaps. So we don't need anything massive, but this wind tells me we do need something massive. So we'll have to suck it and see a little bit, see exactly what we're going to use. Right, I think it's just going to be a case of sprinkling maggots in and seeing if we can actually fish which i'm not sure we're going to be able to today but we'll have a go because this the river is in a cracking condition and fish don't care how much the wind blows do they right we'll have a go let's keep these maggots going in i can get out a little bit further if i want to but we're just sort of getting here to yeah it's getting a bit soft out there I also came out because it uh, forecast not to rain this afternoon. And of course it's rain. <laughs> but as I say, we'll, we'll keep spraying the maggots out there. I'm actually going to try one of these spessy wags I bought. We'll give that one of them a go first. Because we're not really fussed about catching lots of little fish, are we, today? We've got some of these Dave Harrell. Bessie wags. <laughs> proper, proper manly kit. We'll try one of these. It may just be a bit too manly for this, but we don't want to catch lots of small fish. We want to catch some chub and they're not going to have a problem pulling this under. So let's drop this in, see what the shotting's like. Right, we'll try that. So I reckon this chub will come up in the water. I want to intercept these maggots. That's the idea anyway. That's what seemed to happen last time. It took about an hour to get the first bite. But then I didn't really know what I was doing in here. So hopefully, now I do. 
certainly know what I did last time. If we don't catch anything, we haven't lost anything, have we? It would be nice to, to see if we can actually fish before we spend ages baiting up. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm glad I, I'm glad I put that big waggler on, that's for sure. <laughs> Banging through. Unfortunately, it's not a very subtle plop in the water. <laughs> but I would imagine there's stuff been crashing in the water the whole time. This wind's been blowing all last night and all today. And the fish probably not going to spook off that, I wouldn't think. Right, got a bit of a idea of the flow, a bit better idea now. I think we need to be firing these maggots a bit further upstream. I can sort of choose my moments to find the maggots in <laughs> when, the, uh, when the wind drops. It's quite gusty. So it is dropping a bit. Well, it's proving a bit tricky at the moment. I really need to keep the line up at the water. What <laughs> was trying to drag it that way, the wind's trying to drag it that way. If I just let it go, it ends up flying through the peg. Ooh, that was a bite. Not a chub, but uh, it was a bite. Well, I think it was a chub anyway. There we are. First one, look at that. Well, hasn't too, oh, blimey, he's trying to get in the tree. Hasn't taken that long. We ain't got him in yet. <laughs> Giving this rod a workout. But yeah, I think we've been fishing about 10 or 15 minutes. I'm out of the danger area. Feels a reasonable fish. Of course, he's heading for all the snags because it's a chub. <laughs> I mean, I'd imagine he's probably going to try and get under my feet in a minute. Round my... Yeah, oh, that is a tank. God, that's a proper one. I'm going to get in and let as quickly as possible. That's a proper... A proper chunk, that one. I nearly grabbed him when he went past. But I thought, no, nope, I'm not going to be able to get in with one hand. <laughs> God. Because after getting in that tree... God, that's a proper one. Come on. Oh, my goodness. What a way to start that is. It's an absolute unit. <laughs> wow. Cool. What a tank. Cool. Just nipped him in the top lip, middle of the top lip. Cracking hook hold. That was never coming out. There we go. Right, we'll try and have a look at him, shall we? It's about that cracking fish to start off with. <laughs> Look at the belly on him. He's got a belly like mine. <laughs> That's wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. Right. Hopefully, there's some more to have to be to be had. I should say. 
We'll get him in the keep net. We'll keep the, keep the maggots going in. Well, what a start that is. Absolutely fantastic. No wonder he put up such a good scrap. Blimey. It's a cracker. to flick the line upstream. That's what I need to get in the habit of doing. So we're fishing on the far side of the flow. It's pushing the line through. So I need to flick the line upstream with the wind. Well, the wind is sort of going almost into our faces, really. So guys, I've uh, spent 10 minutes just sorting myself out. Just kept getting tangles. I've, I've changed things around now. I'm working just off Olivet's on the line now, apart from a couple of number six droppers. I had uh, some SS, um, AAs and an SSG on the line and it was just getting tangled all the time. So I'm hoping now we've got a couple of Olivet's on here rather than loads of shot. Things will be a bit better, a bit less tangly. Well, I think a lot of it is to do, to do with this wind, but hopefully we'll have less tangles now. I guess the proof will be if we catch any fish. And of course, if we stop getting tangles. <laughs> we didn't get one that cast. Oh dear. Flaring it in very well. I'm trying to put it in with a nice plop. Try and get these maggots out, sort of close to the to the tree but not too close I don't want the chub to sit under the tree and not come out so I'm not I'm trying not to spray him in the tree but I'm trying to spray him close enough that I tempt the chub out that's the idea there we go Another one that's right out in the flow. That one. Oh, no, 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 no. Fishing with fairly robust gear here because they just want to get back in that tree as soon as you walk them. Got O21 mainline on and uh, O19 hook link. As soon as you hook them, they just charge straight off of that tree. You've got to stop them and get in there, you've had it. There's another good fish. Limey. Warming me up a bit, she's good, because it's not very warm stood in this water, I have to say. <laughs> it's not it's quite the stature of that last one. And they all try and get straight in there. <laughs> try and head him off. Guys, come right in, look. Got him. Fab. <laughs> Cracking. Number two. <laughs> There you go, cut the maggots right in the scissors. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I'm thoroughly enjoying this, I have to say. 
thoroughly enjoying it. <laughs> now those of you who watch the channel regularly will know I don't tend to use keep nets, but if you put your back, <laughs> especially in very intimate swims like this, you just, you're not going to catch anymore. I'll go scooting straight back out there and ring the alarm bell for all their mates. Well, my reshotting of the float has, uh, has worked as well. Stop the tangles. That was nice. I didn't, I didn't put that anywhere near the tree, that one. Just middle of the river. <laughs> Very rapid, probably something small. Or a very cagey chub. To be honest, I could certainly do this with a stick float possibly have more control as well of the line so I think it would be beneficial to get the line up off the water although the wind's doing us a favour it's blowing sort of that direction pretty much head on to the camera from that dead tree over there so what I'm able to do is, is flick the line. If I cast in, flick the line or hold the line up in the air, it blows a big bow in it, which when it settles on the water, then slowly comes through. It's quite tricky. See the line's already in, ooh, the line's already in front of the waggler. If I had a bite then it might have been me. I'm just letting a big bow go out down there. I don't think we're going to get any bites down there. We may do, but I think really it's over here. The bites are going to come. Oh, well, whatever happens now, I've had a cracking session. Only a minute, about 45 minutes. Not too cracking, chub. I think I mentioned all I bought with me today is maggots. I do like doing this with mashed bread, but there's no way I'm going to be able to throw some mashed bread over there. <laughs> Not a chance. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I was just thinking, we could be on the maggot feeder now, but it wouldn't be nearly as much fun. <laughs> Come <laughs> Got him. Slowly getting smaller. <laughs> but I don't mind. It's very enjoyable. Now we've got the tangle sorted out. <laughs> it's about that. 
<laughs> Cracking. Straight in the net. There you go, chap. <laughs> oh, must be crazy. Like I say, I was just thinking. Mm, probably would have been a bit more sensible to go on the maggot feeder. But I to be honest, I did fancy doing this. <laughs> I'm not a great fan of battling the elements, but uh, now I've got this sorted, it's not too bad at all. Whee! He says, famous last words. Cool. I'm glad I'm stood in the water. I think it would be getting blown over if I wasn't. I did think the wind would be coming more at river, and I thought, thought we'd be a bit sheltered here. Ooh, that was a bite. It's certainly not stacking across from over there. Where there's a big gap. <laughs> I think every other swim along it, we'd be in in sheltered from the wind. Aside from this one. <laughs> and I had to get right out in the river as well. Just be able to fish, to be honest, with it like it is. There's a platform back there. But I wouldn't have been able to fish off that. Not with this wind. Hopefully you can hear what's going on. Because <laughs> it's properly blowing. As I say, up to 40 mile an hour today and tomorrow. But tomorrow, lots of rain with it too. It's going to be horizontal rain day tomorrow. So I think I shall uh, catch up on some editing. Thank goodness we sorted all the tangles out. As I say, all I've done is put, instead of all the shot I had on, I've just put two olivettes on. Two four gram olivettes. And then a couple of number six droppers. And since I did that, I think I've had one, one tangle. And it wasn't a bad one. What I'm doing is just casting into that gap over there, as you can see. So if I do overcast or if it gets grabbed by a gust of wind or something, it's not a problem. And just letting the float come past that tree. But I'm not needing to go too close to the tree, to be honest. That was a bite. There we go. <gasps> I missed it. Huh. How did I miss that? Oh, that was a dip on the float and then it just disappeared. I managed to miss it somehow. Certainly get some dips on this float. And like I say, it's a three SSG, so it's not exactly sensitive. The tip's about 10 mil in diameter. <laughs> it's a proper float. Can't be lining. I never even made halfway across the river. Well, guys, I think we need it a bit longer. I'm not going to give it too much longer because it's gone a bit quiet, to be honest. I've continued feeding. I've eased off a little bit because we're not getting so many bites. But it's probably been at least 45 minutes since we had that last reasonable sized chub. There we go, look. <laughs> well, we're getting lots of bites down there off other species now. Like dace, for example. And that tells me that the maggots are getting further downstream, which tells me that there's not any chub out in front of me at the moment intercepting them. But we'll, we'll, we'll keep going for a bit. I'll go and get the other pot of maggots. Got through that one. It's not exactly the most pleasant conditions to fish. 
not exactly enjoyable. It is a battle with the wind. But, you know, I knew it was going to be. It's not a, not like it was a surprise. But um, if the fish are not there, for whatever reason, there's not a lot of point. But we'll give it perhaps another half an hour. All right, we've been at it probably an hour and a half now. Maybe two hours, something like that. I can't exactly present very well either in these conditions. I just really fancied having a go while the river looked like this. And uh, we've had some lovely fish, I hope. Thought that was a bite then, I think it was me. We'll give it a concerted effort for, for half an hour. See if we can winkle another one out. Well, I think I'm going to have one more run through and then we're going to call it a day. It's not had a sign of a decent chub for got a good hour now. So I think we had we had that first hour, we had three fish and then for whatever reason, they're not interested anymore. I've tried shallow, I've tried deep, I've tried letting the float run a long, lot further through. We've picked up the, the odd small chub, the odd roach. But uh, the bigger chub, for whatever reason, have, uh, have disappeared. As I say, I've tried, tried, tried feeding more, I've tried feeding less. But for whatever reason, they're not out competitively feeding anymore. And I think when they're, when they're not feeding competitively, you, you're going to struggle to get, get them to uh, get them to take your hook bait. It's been an enjoyable couple of hours, though. Yeah, that's gone right through. It's been a very enjoyable couple of hours, very windswept couple of hours. I do hope you've been able to hear what's been going on. But uh, I think I think that's that's time to call it a day. <laughs> My stomach is telling me it's time to go home and have something to eat. Before we go, we'll have uh, another look at these cracking fish. <laughs> Some lovely ones. With that lovely, lovely roach. Get him back. He's chub. <laughs> Very lively, as you can imagine. <laughs> there we go. Just <laughs> want to have a look at this big one again, really. I'm not going to weigh him, but he's a cracking fish. There we go. There's the, uh, I think the third fish. I think it's slowly smaller. <laughs> there you go. Right, we'll just have a look at this. Well, try and have a look at this. This big one before we put him back. <laughs> Very lively after being in the keep net, but uh, yeah. <laughs> God, very lively, as I say. <laughs> Cracking fish. Wonderful. Right. <laughs> He's very keen to go back, as you can tell. Let's get him back. Beautiful fish, lovely deep bodied fish. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, if the forecast is right, then we're going to get a lot of rain tomorrow. This river is going to come up and up and up. It's probably going to come up another foot at least, I would think, on this, if not a little bit more. If it colours right up, it won't fish well at all. But we'll have to suck it and see a little bit, see what exactly what happens. I'm thinking probably it'll be in a good condition early next week now, or perhaps at the weekend. So maybe time 
when the tributaries come up and then start to drop and maybe try and get up some of the tributaries, have a go up there. We've not been up there for a while. And then perhaps get back on the Avon as it starts to drop again. If it colours up, perhaps the, the colour will drop out again and we'll, we'll have another go on here. Perhaps later on in the week, perhaps early next week, we'll just have to see what happens. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. I hope you heard what was going on as well. It's been so windy. Typically, as I'm just about to go, it's dropped a bit, but uh, it's, it's very blustery. Tight lines when you get out there yourselves. Many thanks to the channel patrons for your fantastic support. And I'll see you all again on the bank very soon.